Hello and welcome. I am Lian Buon and this is Rappler Talk. We're here for another series or episode of the Leader I Want series, our series where we interview candidates for the senatorial elections in 2019, where we focus on issues and platforms and not gimmicks. And for today, we have Neri Colmenares, a human, long-time human rights lawyer running under the Makabayan Party. Sir, magandang araw. Salamat po sa pag... Um, dating dito sa aming opisina. Magandang araw, Lian, at magandang araw sa mga viewers ninyo. Sir, right away, address the Filipino voters. What are your platforms for the midterm election? Well, for the sh short term, immediate, the prices uh, issue is really overwhelming right now. So for me, if I get to the Senate uh, prices first, a bill, a law that will uh, repeal the excise tax on trade. Uh, not just the 2019 tax, but the 2018, 2019, and the 2020 yes. uh, tax on trade. Second is, I've already filed this when I was a member of Congress, uh, a bill that will eliminate VAT from Corriente, Tubig, and Gasolina, mm -hmm. or Langis. No? Uh, these are inflationary products, and the moment you add a regressive tax system like VAT on them, it will uh, increase prices. Um, of course, contractualization. Isang batas na walang patumpik-tumpik liyan na nagbabawal sa contractualization. Mm -hmm. At isang batas na nag-i-increase uh, ng minimum wage sa buong bansa, 750 pesos uh, a day sa buong bansa. Walang regional wage boards, walang pagkakaiba ng sweldo sa NCR at mm -hmm. sa Ilocos. The same uh, workers are suffering today nationwide will have the same wages. So uh, that's on the short term. Of course, on the short term, if I get to the Senate, I will oppose any attempt at cha-cha because I believe this attempt at cha-cha is not about federalism or for the good of the people, but it's about term uh, extension, yes. lifting of term limits, taking out the prohibition of political dynasty in the Constitution. Second is, of course, oppose China. Uh, this, uh, this accommodation of a uh, of aggression of China, West Philippine Sea, and despite such aggression, um, the Duterte administration is still gung-ho about mm -hmm. having joint explorations with China. As a senator, I think I can do a lot to oppose it. But that's on the short term. On the long term, of course, uh, we've filed these bills in Congress. Mm -hmm. I filed these bills in Congress. A genuine agrarian reform. No? Most countries around the world uh, funded their land reform. The Philippines didn't. They make their farmers pay for the land. So for me, the, the success of land reform is that government should really support it fully. And of course, industrialization. Simply put, what is industrialization? Buhos ng support at capital ang gobyerno sa lokal na negosyo at industriya. When thousands of factories will sprout over all over the country, producing what we need. Kung ano mang kailangan natin, kay damit man yan, kay ilaw man yan, kay electric farm man yan, this will provide employment sa lahat. So basically, yun yung, ano, yung mga platforma ko. And of course, I filed this bill before too, and I will file it in the Senate again, a, a provision that prohibits political dynasty, that will disallow any s kind of uh, dynasty in politics na kung saan uh, second uh, degree uh, or third degree uh, affinities and asawa, anak, lola, lolo, tatay runs for uh, public office simultaneously or in succession. So basically, we have a very long-term yes. platform, but I'll probably describe it as very pro-people and very pro-Filipino. So meaning to say, it is a, a, a platform that runs on the needs and the interests of the Filipino people, at hindi takot na depensahan yan. Kasi sometimes the needs and interests of the Filipino people may not coincide with the needs and interests of big business. And many senators probably are not so open to contradicting big business. That's the first. And the second, pro-Filipino, meaning to say independent foreign policy, for example. Hindi naman ako papayag ng China ay mamamayag pag dito. I mean, sabi ko nga, the independent foreign policy that I will espouse in the Senate is hindi tayo maka-Amerikano, hindi tayo maka-Chino, dapat tayo maka-Pilipino. So basically, that's the platform I will run into. And hopefully, makapasok ang mga katulad ni Neri Colmenare sa Senado. And I think, iiba ang diskurso sa Senado pag ang mga katulad ko ay makapasok doon. Okay, sir. Magandang pag-usapan, specifics yung mga platforma nyo. Pero yeah. bago doon, in general muna, the things that you've mentioned, 
are consistent with the values of the left, of the progressives. Makamasa ang mga programa. I'm sorry to bring this up, pero hindi pa rin po kayo makapasok dun sa Magic 12 yeah. ng mga survey. Bakit po sa tingin nyo, despite be having these programs and platforms that are, you said, pro-people, hindi po kayo nakaka-penetrate sa consciousness ng mga... Well, tao according to the survey. Well, two things. The first is probably the message has to reach the people. Dapat malaman ng taong bayan na si Neri Colmenares, ito yung mga final niya na noon at ipafile niya pag siya ay maging senador. And that goes into the issue, of course, of the resources. No? But secondly, ang politika ngayon kasi coupled pa siya ng big names, big mm -hmm. political clans, name recall. Eh, hindi naman ako, <laughs> ang apelido ko, hindi naman big political clan, hindi naman ako artista, Hindi naman ako artistahin lalo na. So, that's a disadvantage, of course. So, that's one reason, I think. Uh, I would like to think that if the message is nakilala ng taong, mm -hmm. ah, si Mary Colmenares, ito pala yung lumaban sa Meralco, ito pala yung uh, nagpapababa ng presyo ng kuryente, uh, lumaban sa train. Mag People, I think, will support me, but that's the, the main problem now. So, two things yan, ha? Una, um, malalakas pa ngayon yung malalaking political clans and the rich and the powerful sa politics natin, name recall. And secondly, kami naman, wala rin kami resources eh. So, that makes it also difficult for us. So, but uh, I guess, you know, with the proper messaging and of course the rich, we can convince many people to really support this time a, a pro-people uh, candidate. Sir, you ran in 20, you ran and lost in the last senatorial elections. Yes. That was a very different um, time. Yes. <laughs> Ibang iba na ngayon. Um, ano po yung tingin nyo, uh, what changed the most kung tingin nyo bakit may pag-asa kayong manalo? Yes, well, ang una siyempre dyan, lessons learned. Now, 2016, we did, uh, if there's anything that we do most of the time is we, uh, we evaluate our weaknesses, our strength, and so where what did the, what was the weakness that you observed ah, well, from 2016? Well, yung sinabi ko kanina, we were not able to, hun to hurdle these big political clans and the lack of resources. Uh, pero ngayon, ang kinaiba, I think, uh, the, kung sa abogado pa, mm -hmm. the issues are joined. Uh, very clear ngayon yung mga issues under President Duterte. Okay. Are you for contractualization or not? Medyo, ano na ngayon yan? Are you really for train or against train? Are you for EJK or against EJK? So, medyo, pag clear ang issue, I think candidates have to make their positions known. Uh, some candidates probably voted for train before, and now they are saying, well, the train is bad. No? So, that, that's a little bit unclear for the voters. Ako, I can look people straight in the eye and say, well, we were against train right from the start. And you filed the petition before the Supreme Court. Correct. We even filed the petition as early as January of 2018, right after train was... Uh, was uh, approved against the constitutionality of train dahil ang train inaprubahan niya ng kongreso ng walang na walang forum. forum. So, uh, for me, yan naman siguro ang advantage ko in the sense na no uh, the issues are clear so I can really uh, mention these things. And secondly, I would like to think that um, and social media is something that will should go for us this time. No? Um, Lessons learned naman, of course, previous candidates rode on their social media campaign. All we have to do is, we have a lot of members all over the country, and I would like to think that we are one of the most powerful social media forces, if we can harness all our members. No? So, if we can do that, siguro, uh, ensure namin na mga members namin, oh, bawal na muna ang retweet ha, bawal na muna ang like ha, ngayon, comment talaga ha. <laughs> so, if we can do that, then maybe, maybe we can also uh, win out in the end dito sa senatorial uh, elections. Sir, let's talk about contractualization. Uh, when President Duterte was campaigning, there was a big promise to yes. abolish contractualization. Honestly, sir, at that time, naniwala ba kayong this is gonna be the presidency that stops and abolishes contractualization? When President Duterte promised the things he said during the campaign period, he eliminate proof drugs in six months, I didn't believe him. Politico, nangangampanya lang. How can you eliminate drugs in six months? You don't even know who the pusher is in Hala Hala Rizal. But when he became president, he did not repeat those promises. Panalo na siya eh, di ba? But he repeated them. He said, lalabanan ko ang contractualization independent foreign policy. Mamimigay ako ng libreng lupa sa magsasaka. 
That's when I began to think hard. He doesn't need to say that. He's not, he's not the president, but he's, he, he said, said things that no president has ever said. So did I take that seriously? Yes, yes. We shouldn't be foolish as to just negate or say, ah, that's, kasi different ito eh. So Sir, two years later, did two years later, meet we your expectations? We, find out, we found out it's all BS on his part, no? I still remember his China campaign line. I will ride in a jet ski and plant the Philippine flag, and if the Chinese shoot me, then I want to be a hero anyway. And a lot of people probably, you know. But now, look at him. In fact, one of his major promises that really also convinced a lot of voters, not just us, is his promise to dispel, to dispel, to di disperse public funds from central Manila or from central national agencies national to the poor provinces. A lot of people like Provinciano, like mm. me, probably voted for him because, oh, he's going to disperse all these funds to the provinces. But look at his budget. In, in 2016, the budget for Metro Manila, for national, met, national capital region, is $445 billion. It's 15% of the entire budget. Is that big? Yes, it's big. It's under Aquino. But he's saying in 2018, his budget for NCR regional allocation, if you look at the 2018 budget, was a staggering 817 billion pesos, 22 percent went to NCR. So I thought, <laughs> ano yung joke lang pala yung campaign promise mo na, you know, he outdid all imperial presidents in centralizing funds in NCR. So all these promises, contractualization, in the end. There was no intention really to, to really fulfill it. Um, and so it's really, you know, and it, it's, of course, <laughs> realized to later, a year later, that, uh, or nearly two years later, na hindi niya pala gustong gawin yun. But um, uh, it's good that uh, a lot of people are arriving to that conclusion now. Do you think that a lot of people are yeah. arriving to what you say? Yeah, let me rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> there are some people now who thought, or believed in him, who are realizing that it was uh, hindi naman pala niya gagawin. Uh, marami, marami pa rin mga naniniwala sa kanya kasi very, ano yung pangako niya, and very direct. Ah. So, uh, probably it's the task of makabayan and people like me to explain to the people na actually hindi natutupad eh. <laughs> ang hirap ng buhay natin, mataas ang presyo. And in the end, I realized President Duterte is anti-poor and anti-Filipino. Are you anti-Duterte? Basically, I, we're against Duterte. Uh, I don't want to put labels on what we are. We are against his extrajudicial killings. We are against his foreign policy. Yung economic policy niya na foreign investor, foreign investor. Uh, been there, done that na yan. All presidents did that. He still pursues it. Neoliberalism, when papasukin mo yung mga transnational corporations to the detriment of the poor, we're against that. We are against his policies against human rights. We are against his policies, his misogynist. Uh, ano. Basically, President Duterte can be encapsulized as one ferocious dictator whose intolerance of dissent is legendary. And uh, intolerance is a dissent. But the problem with President Duterte is, is he can dish it, but he cannot take it. He will call you gago, gonggong, stupido, criminal. Even he, he even calls God stupid. Pero pag ikaw, may sasabihin ka sa kanya, magagalit siya. The problem is, he's not using his per personal Facebook to attack you. He's using his presidential platform. Pag nag-disagree ka sa kanya, if you say something bad against him, hindi siya sport. Gagamitan kanya ng presidential powers niya, paimbestigan kanya sa NBI, paimbestigan kanya sa police, impeachment ka, pawaranto ka, i-void yung amnesty mo. Abay, that's really... Hindi, hindi acceptable yan. So... And that's one of the main reasons why I'm against President Duterte is because, well, if you look at it from the political sense, his intolerance is intolerant of dissent. But on a personal level, hindi kasi sa sport, he can dish it, but he cannot take it. Yung mga nanonood, sir, magko-comment sila na ito na talagang paglambya ng relasyon ng kaliwa at ni President Duterte because there was a honeymoon period. Well, actually, ako ha, kami sa NUPL, as early as July 4 of 2016, four days pa lang si President Duterte in power, we expressed our concerns sa extrajudicial killings. When he said something about contractualization, we supported. He supported my bill 
the 2,000 peso increase sa pension ng lahat ng SSS yes. pensioner. He only gave 1,000. But that's, you know, ako naman, reasonable akong tao, Lian. Kung tama naman yung ginawa, wala akong problema sa sabi, that's good. So, 1,000 SSS pension. Would you call it honeymoon? I don't know how you will describe it, but I think that is correct. If he says something na libreng pamamahagi ng lupa, tama ba yun? Tama, correct. Pero ang EJK siya, yung misogynism niya, birahin dapat yon. So, uh, however, it's, I don't want to go into the labels kasi ang definitions, whether it's honeymoon, but that practically describes our relationship with President Duterte. If he promises something which we believe is pro-people, why not? Why don't we encourage him to do that? Independent foreign policy, di ba? For example, peace process. But the moment he commits human rights violation, or at least espouses the commission of human rights violation, then that's something we cannot take sitting down. Sir, you mentioned peace process. Yes. Nagsampang, the DOJ filed a prescription petition before the Manila RTC tagging yeah. uh, members of the left as terrorists and pinapaaresto yung mga high-ranking yes. leaders. Hopeful pa rin po ba kayo na may patutunguhan yung peace process na sinimulan ng isang presidente who called himself the first leftist president or the first socialist president? Yes, well, uh, two points dyan. No? So if you're talking of prescription, uh, una muna doon sa peace process, I, alam mo, I have been a peace advocate for so many, many years. That is a human rights lawyer, but a peace advocate. And I would really love you know, to see a Philippines with a just and lasting peace. And any president who can do that, um, he, will, he or she will earn the support of the Filipino people. But President Duterte is not that president. It, from, the, from how we view his policies, it's, for me, naghihingalo na yan. Kung hindi pa naman siya matay, komatos na yan. Um, the second point dun sa prescription is it shows actually the, the mindset. Eh. Dissenters, yung mga ordinary opposition, even the UN rapporteur on indigenous yes. people, are considered communist. Di ba? Rebelde. Just because they dissent, that shows the mindset. Eh. And a, a person who considers uh, dissenters and those who oppose his policies as communists and rebel is probably not the best president to have peace with. Because that, that only shows that his, uh, he has this, uh, pen, this viewpoint niya on dissent. Uh, isang presidente who thrived on dissent for a long period, during his campaign, he was dissenting on major policies of government, Aquino and whoever. When he was mayor, he, hindi naman siya pwedeng utusan lang na kung sino sinong presidente. So he knows for a fact that uh, that's how dissent is. But now that he's in power, medyo hindi na siya acceptable sa mga ganun. So I guess I would love to see genuine, genuine, just, and lasting peace in the country, but I'm not very hopeful under President Duterte. But he's still a popular president. In your in the course of your campaign, paano nyo po i-deliver yung message nyo in a way na hindi nyo naman ini-alienate ang, ang mga supporter ng presidente? What issue would you use to 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 deliver the message that you want without alienating them? First, first economics lang. The main issue sa economics is talagang naghirap ang buhay natin. I, I think I'll, I'll deliver that message. Whether you are pro-Duterte or against Duterte, the fact is, lumala ang buhay nyo dahil sa train. So I'll espouse the uh, repeal of train. And I think even pro-Duterte people will say, yes, that's a good one. You re repeal mo nga yung train. Contractualization. He promised it. He didn't deliver. I think many of his supporters will support people who are honestly huh, uh, saying that no to contractualization. Uh, so, so yun, no? so AJK for example, a survey of AJK shows that many people support this anti-drug campaign. Do I support the, the move against uh, the, the problem of drugs? Of course, yes. Sino ba naman yung hindi gusto na malinis ang bansa ng droga? But according to the very survey, the many of the people do not like extrajudicial killings. So I guess, matatranscend mo yung issue by saying, A ako actually, ang ayaw ko doon, hindi yung kampanya mismo eh. Ang ayaw ko doon yung EJK. Pag yung pagpatay. Yes. So I guess, yun yung pag-handle doon na may paliwanag sa kanila, straight to the issue. Ano ba talagang issue? So, pre presidents come and go eh. I mean, you know, Duterte will not be there in a few years' time. But the moment itong mga issue na to ay lumala, 
contractualization, yung trade, etc. The children will suffer the next generation, lalo na yung cha-cha niya, federalismo niya. So, maybe, I, I go just discuss the issues I've been doing before and I think it's no longer just a pro or anti-Duterte, but they will probably see that Neri Colmenares talks about the very issue that hurts us, hurts our stomach, hurts our family, and hopefully they will f support a candidate who will help give solutions to such problems. Sir, let's talk about EJK. Your group, the National Union of People's Lawyers, has, has been on the forefront of um, representing victims, families of victims yeah. of EJKs. Ano po yung masasabi niyo sa mga Pilipino kung ano yung estado ng bansa natin pagdating sa impunity base sa nakita niyo sa mga uh, kliyente niyo? Grabe ang impunity sa Pilipinas. In fact, that's the one of the main problems on, on the human rights field. Uh. Impunity. What is impunity? Impunity is when people commit crimes and get away with it. You know, the Philippines, we have the worst form of impunity. Why? Because here in the Philippines, People commit crimes because they know they can get away with it. Thousands and thousands and thousands na yung namamatay. Have you ever heard of anyone convicted? President Duterte just issued ad administrative order number two, a memorandum order number 32, sorry, because may lawless violence now and we need to arrest people. And so, My God, if you don't consider the drug killings as lawless violence, you don't even need a memorandum number 32 to arrest people and investigate. So, yan yung situation ngayon. And President Duterte, ito ang problem kay President Duterte. When he did his drug campaign, he focused on the demand side, mga addicts. He should have focused on the government side. Kasi itong mga drugs naman, hindi naman magpo-proliferate yan kung walang suporta ng piskal, ni judge, ni congressman, ni mayor, ni governor, ni general, ni colonel. Dapat nilinis niya to. And because he didn't really clean up the government, then impunity continues to exist because none of them were punished for it. Sir, as a legislator, how do you propose to address the problems of EJK? Siyempre, iba naman yung trabaho ng pagiging human rights lawyers yes. and fighting it on the yes. courts than being a, a lawmaker. Ano po yung um, pinopropose niyong solusyon para ma-address yung problema ng EJK? Two points. Una, legisl legislative, no? Uh, when I was a member of Congress, I... I'm very proud naman, I'm the author doon sa yung Marcos Human Rights Compensation no? uh, Law na nag-compensate sa mga victims ng martial law. Also, uh, one of the authors sa uh, anti-enforced disappearance law and torture, anti-torture law. So, will I do that in the Senate? Yes, there are many laws that we need to also pass para mas specify ang mga human rights. Uh, right, mga Sir, human in rights. the context of the alleged abuses by state agents like the PNP, meron yes. na po ba kayong idea ngayon kung anong legislation na pwedeng mag-fix nitong problem? Ay, human Rights Defenders Law. Matagal ko na, for example, Can yan. you tell the people well, about it? It's a law that will uh, protect human rights defenders. Who are the human rights defenders? Human rights lawyers, uh, paralegals, you know, things like that. But the second aspect is not just legislative. Another function of Congress and members of Congress is investigation as part of our oversight in oversight function or in aid of legislation, yes. either way. Ito mga investigasyon, if, if I were in the Senate, I think baka may dulo ang investigation. Ang problema kasi sa investigation always, simula mo, walang ending. Problema sa House, 292 kami dyan eh. Ang committee namin, laki-laki. Pero sa Senate, you're just one of 24 eh. And if you launch an investigation, I would like to think that I will be able to deliver an ending to an investigation which that. Ang laki ng importansya niyan sa impunity because we can investigate and we can make recommendations clearly dahil abogado ako. Yung report mismo to, to investigate and prosecute a certain individual who committed human rights violation uh, could be had. No? So I guess those are the twin aspects na maitulong ko sa impunity, sa laban sa impunity, although of course ang executive talaga sana ang may main function to stamp out impunity in the country. Sir, let's go back a bit to NUPL. It's been a hard couple of months for you guys. Yeah. You lost Attorney Ben. Yes. Tapos si Attorney Kathy is facing yes. kidnapping, yes. if I'm correct, if yes. correct charges. Yes. How are you dealing with it now? Especially you're the chairman of the NUPL and you're running a campaign. 
How are you yeah. dealing with everything? Well, uh, ang hirap ng buhay. I know Attorney Ben personally. He's four or five towns away from my hometown, from, from Negros. Attorney Kathy, she's a young lawyer. All she wanted was to help people. And now she has a kidnapping char uh, charge. Would, would, would you realize how it impacts on a young lawyer? So, laki namang impact sa amin yan. But, you know, we, uh, we believe naman sa people's lawyering that we have to trudge on. Of course, ako dahil uh, makabayan chairman ako, I, I leave to any, ang chairman naman ng NUPL is an honorary. <laughs> Parang binibigay yun sa mga matatandang abogado ng NUPL siguro. So, I, I leave it to the younger lawyers there. But, you see, we have to do this. When I was a young student, one minute, when I was a young student, I was the chairman of Student Catholic Action, we were fighting merely for the return of student council and school papers. Panahon ni Marcos. I was arrested. I was 18 years old. I was tortured. Just because we were demanding the return of student council and school papers, I was in prison for four years. You know, every year that I stayed in that prison, every year, para ang, pri ang preso lumiliit ng lumiliit every year. Sumisikip. But you know what makes it a little bit more, you know, parang at least hopeful? Human rights lawyer. A human rights lawyer would come to us and say, no, we will fight this out and you, you will be released someday, so on. So yun siguro ang inspiration ko doon that as a human rights lawyer, I could provide that certain kind of hope to people. No matter how difficult, no matter no we're threatened, no matter that it's not easy to win cases in the Supreme Court or everywhere, the fact is we have to do what we need to do because this is what the, people's, the people needs and this is what uh, our talent and our skill is in, uh, so lawyering. So it's very difficult, but we have to continue doing this if only to provide the people with the judicial and legal remedy for their legal problem. Sir, our counts so far show that at least 35 judges, prosecutors, and lawyers have been killed yes. in the Duterte administration. Ano ang masasab mapapangako niyo sa mga batang lawyer niyo ng NUPL yeah. and the aspiring lawyers to still continue being a human rights lawyer and people's lawyering to continue representing victims of EJKs when this is the situation that they're faced? Yes, well, generally, of course, dapat alam nung lahat na you cannot attack a lawyer for his exercise of his profession profession niya yan eh. Bakit mo siya aatakihin? Kung ayaw mo ng kliyente niya, problema mo yun. Pero huwag yung mong birahin yung abogado. Now, what I can do, as if, especially if I'm in the Senate, alam mo, ang voice ng isang senador is heavier. In Congress, I'm 1 over 292. In the Senate, I'm 1 over 24. I think I can, ma I can manage stronger action against killing of, not just killing of lawyers, that's very uh, parochial of me, Killing of media, killing of priests, and extrajudicial killings in general. Dalawa pa rin yan, batas and congressional investigations. Sir, but uh, but to assure lawyers, to assure new lawyers that you can continue, alam mo, I cannot really, I, I have to admit, the, the EJK is something that we cannot control, or I cannot promise young lawyers, oh, there will be no EJK against us, there will be no charges filed against you. Ako, may mga kaso din ako as a human rights lawyer, kinakasuhan din ako. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot really do that. But what I can tell them is this, sa mahabang panahon ng pagpractice natin, as people's lawyer, ha, we serve the people. And I guess our main defense, our main defense from atrocities committed against us are the very clients, the people that we serve, the human rights advocates, the peasants, the farmers. Uh, maybe some people, some young lawyers will say, well, it doesn't really give us 100% security or assurance, but uh, I guess that's how we have to look at the reality. The very people we serve, we serve are the very people who will protect us. Attorney Ben suffered a really uh, unfortunate fate, a bad death. But the reaction and the response of the people, not just here, but even in the international community, condemning his killing, hopefully will dissuade the next killer from killing another lawyer. And that's what I mean when I say the very people we served are the very people who will put up a defense for us. So you said you will have a greater voice in the Senate, but with a greater voice come a greater risk. The opposition Senator Leila Dalima has been jailed, Senator Trillanes was almost put to jail. Yeah. Why would you want to 
enter that arena where you could be the next target? It's not a question of what. <laughs> Sabi ko nga eh, you know, of, of course, gusto naman ng lahat manalo, gusto naman. Pero, you know, eh, you really want it. It's a question of need ata. Let's, I'll probably call it need. Is there a need for a, for a progressive member of the Senate? A senator who will say contractualization is wrong and I don't care if big business will not support me that is wrong and that's where I stand and if I say a senator who will say 750 pesos minimum wage all over the country and I don't care if big business will not support me that's the most important thing for workers so it's a need eh? there has to be a voice from an ordinary person to to voice the interest of the ordinary people so I guess that's 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 uh, that's how I would look at it. Um, of course, there are dangers, but even if I'm not in the Senate, as a human rights lawyer, as a member of Bayan Muna in Congress, we've always been threatened. There have been, you know, in, during the time of Arroyo, about 150 members of Bayan Muna were, were killed. And I think no political party in the Philippines can survive with 150 members killed if the polit that political party is not supported by the people. So I guess the risk is there. Habang pari ka, kailangan mo magbinisa. So, <laughs> hindi ka pwedeng hindi magmisa. That's just a quota. I'm not a priest. Um, hindi ko lang sabihin, it, it's your function eh. And you need to do that. And uh, I guess, um, are we afraid? Of course, yes. Hindi naman kami superman eh. Uh, we're afraid, but you have to fulfill your duties to the Filipino people, especially since that has been our principle since I became a young activist when I was 18 year years old during martial law. So you said there needs to be a progressive voice in the Senate, kailangan. But are you ready to compromise? Because it essentially it's going to be a numbers game. If you're the only one who brings that progressive voice, hanggang saan po kayo willing mag-compromise? Uh, depende na sa situation. I'm not uh, immutable. Hindi ako parang immovable na ano. Tingnan natin. For example, 750 minimum wage. Eh, kung mag-compromise sila na say 650 or 700, pag-isipan natin. Hindi ako absolutist eh. And that's probably, I think, ah, that's one of the <laughs> positive aspect in my, the way of thinking. 2,000 pesos ang hiningi ko ng dagdag sa SS suspension. Ibibigay 1,000. Okay ka ba dyan? Yeah, why not? Ma masaya na ang mga senior citizen doon. So, it's not even a willingness to compromise, but to see how much gain and how much loss in a certain situation. Of course, there are basic things I will not compromise. Which are? Well, for example, contractualization. I, I wouldn't want so a... So for you, uh, dapat abolish contractualization. Abolish the rule must be regular ang empleyado. Exception lang yung contractual. Ang nangyayari ngayon, baliktad. Ang rule is, contractual kayong lahat, bira lang maging regular. And I would like to reverse that. So things like that. Um, so, sa akin, you know, y y if you want the bill passed, you know, my uh, balikan ko SS pension, I started with 5,000 pesos na increase sa pension. But then, later on, nalala, so bumaba naman ako sa 2. Resonable naman akong tao liyan. And I think... Kayang uh, makipagtawaran kung ba? Yeah, yeah. Ako naman, if only na igiit niyo na yung I authored the anti-dynasty bill, uh, in Congress, and the leadership there said, would you agree na kasi stricto yung aking anti-dynasty bill? Pag isa lang, isa lang, walang dalawa. Sabi nila, would you agree na okay lang yung dalawa, bawal yung tatlo? Sabi ko, we can consider that. Basta papasa. Eh, hindi naman po masa, but I, I was really open to discussing changes na i-allow yung dalawa, pero bawal na yung pangatlo. So, I guess um, I would cross that bridge when I get there. But uh, I'm not really, um, I'm, I'm, I can realize kung saan yung gains at saan yung losses. You can meet in the middle. Kung I can meet if it's uh, necessary but without, uh, you know, abandoning my basic principles. Sir, allow me to get a little bit political. Opposition kayo, sir. Yes. You're in opposition. Maraming nagtatanong, bakit hindi po kayo kasali sa opposition coalition? Well, so, first, firstly, the need, I mean, th there is a need for unity on the, the the opposition right now. As I mentioned a while ago, President Duterte is a ferocious dictator whose intolerance of dissent is legendary. We really need to, to unite. Um, the Liberal Party, we've had differences with the Liberal Party. It, uh, you know, we've had marami kaming mga criticism sa kanila uh, nung panahong nandun sila sa gobyerno. Um, I guess... Uh, Weren't those resolved in the time of Duterte? 
I mean, or hindi weren't those parang the, the differences, set aside? The differences are basic naman eh. Our, our interpretation of what agrarian reform is is a very basic difference. Uh, of course, we disagreed with that and uh, pork barrel. Um, so, so I guess probably uh, it's not very easy for the, the Liberal Party to, to resolve that. But I would understand that, you know, understand that I, I wouldn't really take it against them na ay hindi kami. Sir, Pero but were there concrete discussions? Nag-usap po ba talaga ang yeah, dalawang Yeah, there, there were initial talks. There were initial talks with some of their leaders. And it's, it's, it was really, in fact, positive ang kuha ko noon. No? Um, were you there? As in, kasama po kayo sa... Yeah, kikita. yeah, I was there. And... Um, Pero siguro, in the end, they decided na I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, but in the end... How did the talk the end dito? na lang, sir? Parang yeah. where did you openness, guys end it? Openness. Both sides say, oh, sige, bukas kami for... for ano. So, anyway, ito naman ang importante. Many of those in the opposition, not necessarily the leaders, but some on the leadership probably, but many of their members naman, willing naman to include me in 8 plus 1. So, I guess... Hindi man naman namin ma-achieve yung nine member opposition slate. At marami namang open sa 8 plus 1. And so I guess papasalamat na rin ako doon. It's, it's good for voters' empowerment na, you know, we go beyond the differences of the groups. And it's also very good for, for makabayan and I hope also good for the Liberal Party that, you know, people are united not on the basis of the previous differences but on the realization that we need to be united in the face of such a tyrant like Duterte. In, in, in the end, ang tatargitin naman talaga dito, left, dilaw, and all those, ano eh, and all those uh, groups eh. So, so, sir, which group was more uncertain? Parang sino yung mas maraming reservation sa pag unite Yeah, we, well, we spoke to the Liberal Party only. Uh, kasi sila naman ang yung nag, ano, doon sa, nagbubuo ng coalition. So, um, I wouldn't know the opinion of the other members of that coalition, the other groups. But I think, I think there is a realization for all of us of the need to unite. Now, whether whether or not it it will bear fruit, uh, I wouldn't know. May, maybe it will, maybe it will not. But siguro ang realization na lang that we have commonalities: human rights, extrajudicial killing, tyranny. These are common, and for me. I'm very satisfied with that. Na at least we deliver the blows against the tyrannical policies of President Duterte. Whether we deliver it as one coalition or we deliver it separately, uh, for me, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, ma uh, okay na rin sa akin na nagkaisa kami sa mga issues na yan. Sir, one of the criticisms of the against the left, which also come from some of the members din naman, is the fact that some of your um, higher members were held uh, cabinet positions sa the mm. Terte administration. Well, uh, sabi ko naman kanina ang relasyon namin, ito sa principal position na kung saan we support uh, whatever uh, we think should be supported. And we of course condemn. Hindi kami parang aliado na o member ng gobyerno na yes to all. Ganun naman kami, independent. Uh, secondly, yung peace process dati, malaking bagay yun sa marami. Mm. I mean, if you can achieve peace, well, that's, that's really something that we can leave as a legacy to the next generation of Filipinos. Isang Pilipinas na walang gyera. Uh, nandun sila on the promise of reform and change. Nung klaro na na hindi na ma-achieve yung reform and change, at yung peace process, definitely hindi naman matutuloy yun. So I guess that, uh, that, oh, sorry. So I guess that, um, you know, that made it clear that President Duterte was not who he promised to be. Uh, kung, kung ano man yung conclusion doon namin, the fact that Duterte is a tyrant, some people arrived at that conclusion earlier than others. But we eventually got there, and the others will eventually get there. So, ibig ko lang sabihin, when, during the time of Arroyo, there was high attempt. When they resigned from Arroyo, the, the anti-Arroyo forces welcomed them. Kasi ang importante doon, now they're saying that Gloria Arroyo is wrong, is bad for the Philippines. So, I guess, ganun, in the same manner na yung mga sinasabi nilang, 
mga DDS. You know, if we can convince them, I wouldn't take it against them that you know they were once DDS. They voted for Duterte. Ang importante they realize that President Duterte is not the reform the reform-minded president they promised to be. So. Will they take it against us that uh, some of the members of the left were part of the Duterte administration? I hope not. And I would like to think, na sana naman isipin nila na it would be foolish for any for people like us to to just say ito mga pangako niya pero kami hindi kami nami pinansin. Importante ang pansin yun. Eh. Contractualization. If we only delivered in contractualization, contractualization. That will be a major, major development sa bansa natin. That, that will really put a lot of workers uh, in better conditions. Unfortunately, he didn't follow through. But the fact is, he promised and said that he's going to abolish it. And I guess we really have to support that promise. Sir, uh, in the U.S., yung rise of the populist, some... Yeah experts were saying maybe it's due to the failure of the left or the progressives. Dito sa Philippine context ba napag-uusapan yun na baka tayo rin yung nagkamali or may pagkakamali rin tayo? And kung may naiisip man kayo, ano po yun? Well, ang boto ni kay President Duterte, actually, the people who voted, in my opinion, was a result of the frustration of the Filipino people sa mga nakalipas na administrasyon who promised reform, promised changes, at hindi nag-deliver. Hindi lang, nag hindi nag-deliver. They worsened the condition. So, yun talaga ang nagpapunta doon sa populist president na nanangangako, nababaguhin po yan. So, it's not really the failure of the left in that sense, but the failure, of course, of the previous political groups and administrations to deliver on their promise. So, so in ganun, ang ganun ang point ko doon. Uh, magkaiba ang sitwasyon sa US at sa Pilipinas. Dito sa Pilipinas kasi ang left dito, ang progressive dito, tinatangka talaga nilang emarginalized, killings pa nga, di ba, arrests na hindi naman nag exist sa ano. So dihado ang left talaga sa political playing field dahil nabibira siya eh. Ang hope sana ng taong bayan noon ay ang mga previous administrations. However, they failed, miserably failed. That's why a lot of people ay naniwala kay President Duterte. So I guess um, it was a failure more of, of, of the administration's past. Sir, sabi mo nga medyo dehado yung left. I yeah. mean, hindi naman po siguro um, bago sa inyo na tinotroll din kayo on social media, yung laging yung nakikita ng mga meme na rally na lang kayo ng rally, yeah, yeah. lahat na lang ng presidente, pinapabagsak niya gano'n. How do you... Um, plan to make the left relevant or at least mas naiintindihan ng mga taong forever na lang kayong tinutulig sa paano nyo po mapipenetrate yung, tar yung market na yun? Yeah. I, I remember once um, sabi ng kaibigan ko sabi niya, kayo kasi lahat ng presidente kinikriticize nyo, sabi ko, may presidente bang walang mali? Eh, wala naman o di, dapat criticize mo, di ba? Pangalawa, sabi ko, anong gusto mo? Yung congressman na kung sinong presidente dilipat siya O yung congressman na kung sinong presidente, iti-check and balance niya. Sabi niya, sabuti siguro na iti-check and balance kaysa gumilipat kung sinong presidente. How do we how do we respond to that? I guess, ang, ako ang sabi ko actually, sa mga members namin na nagsisimpatize, sagutin nyo, explain nyo. In, in a reasonable fashion. Ang sagot nila sa akin, eh troll yan eh. Pag troll yan, wala ka namang mahita dyan eh. Pangalawa, Pag nag-engage ka, nababayaran sila ng marami. Sa akin, well, why not? Eh, kung nag-engage ka, malay mo, may ma makabasa ng statement mo na sagot sa troll that will be convinced. Secondly, babayaran sila. O di, distribution of wealth yon, pahirapan mo yung nagbabayad sa troll by making the trolls richer by <laughs> engaging them. So, I, uh, for me, yun ang isang response doon. Na para sa akin, na. So, so, you control ang tanong mo liyan. Sagutin mo. Of course, you know, you pace yourself kasi map, mabubuo ang ganda. <laughs> uh, you pace yourself, pero huwag mong hayaan na. I troll lang yan. I don't need to explain. Tsaka, pag nag-engage ako dyan, babayaran ng malaki. Sige, okay lang. Pag matriple nila yung binabayad sa kanila, o didihado ngayon yung, yung nag-ano. So, siguro yun. Pero thirdly, ito, on the, ano, 
ang panagot talaga sa troll at sa lahat ng nidisagree sa iyo, una yung issue ng dala-dala mo. Klaro 'yon. Yung walang patumpik-tumpik, no ako sa trade. Tapos, yun yun eh. No pang, qualifier, no. Parang ibig ko lang sabihin, hindi sabi mo nga kanina sa simula, hindi gimmick, platforma hindi gimmick eh. Yun talaga yung actually kahit gaano kababaw ng tingin ng iba sa botante, mag-iisip yan sa totoo lang na ang dala-dala niya ba makakapababa sa presyo. That's the first. Second siguro, ang mga counter ko dyan sa whoever is troll man yan, o, oh, yung track record eh. Alam mo, Lian, any politician running for election can now say, ah, I'm actually against train, I'm actually for workers, I'm actually for, uh, for higher wages. It's easy to say that if your platform is actually very easy to compose. But what probably differentiate me from the others? And I hope to win over people on that. Yung track record. Bin, ginawa ko na yun. Pinapangako ng iba. Ginawa ko na yun. In fact, ang tanong sa kanila, baka naisip mo lang ngayon yun, yung election. Kasi election, eh, naisip mo pro-worker ka, pro-farmer. Ako, I can look them straight in the eye. May election o walang election, lalabanan ko si Meralco. May eleksyon o walang eleksyon, ipa-file ko yung batas na nagtataas ng sahod. Nag, no, in 2016, I could only remember about two senatorial candidates who said no to contractualization. I, I don't know if I'm wrong. <laughs> Me and Lorna Kapunan. The rest are very afraid of you know, contractualization. Naku, di ba? Pero sabi ko, mawawalan kayo ng support ng business. Of course, I want the support of everybody, even business. Pero ang tama-tama, ang mali-mali. May hanggan, gusto ko bang manalo sa Senado? Of course, gusto kong manalo sa Senado. Pero may hangganan ang pagnanais na manalo. You know, you cannot sacrifice the very principles you've lived through your whole life. And just say, ah, oh, I'll not say that kasi baka walang support. Many said, many said, Mary, if you come out against Bongbong Marcos in 2016, you will lose a lot of votes from the Ilocos. But, you know, I was tortured and arrested and four years of my life were lost during the time of martial law. Hindi ko naman pwedeng hayaan yung isang kandidatong nagsasabi na nung panahon ng martial law, ang ganda-ganda ng buhay ng Pilipinas, na wala namang human rights violations. I have to... You know, I'll probably lose votes from many of those Ilocanos, but I would like to think that I, I respect them too, and they would probably still support me because I espoused issues that will benefit them. Kung papataas ng sahod nila, magbibigay ng pensyon sa kanila. Yung ganun ba? So, uh, I guess, in the end, balikan ko na yung sinabi ko. Gusto naman nating manalo. Pero may hangganan ang pagnanais na manalo. And probably that's how I would describe why I would change the discourse in the Senate if I get there. Uh, iiba ang diskurso sa Senado pag uh, nandun si Mary Colmenares. Sir, I think you wrapped that up pretty well. <laughs> so, thank you, sir, for joining us today on Rappler Talk. This has been Lian Guan, and join us again for our next episode of The Leader I Want. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you.